I entered the Tararua Mountain Race, which is a just a wild adventure running race that runs over the Southern Crossing, which is from Kaitoki to, to Otaki. It was the most harrowing trip. It was in December, it snowed, it was so brutal and so much hard work. My friend who came with us still talks about it as being one of the most horrendous days of his life. My brother-in-law, uh, Neil and I, we had this amazing day out, this great adventure, and like really hard, but yeah, but amazing. It, it was this heart and spirit of adventure. It, it was just people pushing themselves and doing just something really crazy and out there in a really wild environment. People were wanting to know whether they could do it in a single push and do it in under 24 hours. And I think 1995, Colin Ralph did that. He was the first to do that. It also takes a fair bit of mental motivation to put yourself into that situation, which is, yeah, that's hard. It's, it's a hard thing to do. You know, I counted up, there was like 17 different adventures that I'd gone on in the range with my mates and had filmed footage and put together little short videos, mainly just to music. It felt really like something I'd never experienced to that degree before. Like I'd failed at lots of different stuff, but had never had kind of something that had broken me as much mentally. And that was a really disconcerting experience. Reading David Goggin's book, Can't Hurt Me, mm. who... And that was really pivotal because there's, there was a really amazing lesson in there mm. about how when you face adversity, how to go through and debrief that. Our bodies are capable of far more than our mind is capable of. It was immensely satisfying to finally complete it. Yeah, it yeah. was very cool. I watched this selection of incredible short films of people out adventuring and it created this little dream that man one day I'd love to make a film that inspired people to go on adventures it sounds like you, you really understood the heart and soul of it and the emotion of it but it was a, more of a case of okay I've got all this footage how do I tell a story it just seems like such an inspiring story to put out to people and you've got that great landscape and all the dynamic that comes in with the Tararua range. It was grabbing the stories from those characters and then putting that to a, a visual story, but that didn't work. I, I love looking through footage and seeing, just finding what cool stuff might be lingering in there. We've got to get a camera operator in there, and we've got a cinematographer or whatever. We've got to get there and get some real proper documentary footage. You and Joe and Tim planned the adventure to go and capture the footage. It was just slogging through the mud for six hours each day. Oh, maybe it would have been harder to pull off than we thought, with pe <laughs> people coming to huts quite late in the day. They're tired. There's other noise and things going on. We got to Dundas and... I was really hoping that it would clear for the morning so we could get some of those shots of the sunrise from mm. Dundas, and it, and it did, and it was beautiful. Yeah. yeah, one of the ones that sticks out is the sound of people's feet going through the icy grass, the, the icy tussock. Yeah. That had to go on the film. Sitting down and chatting with people about stuff that they love is it's so cool, and you get to have conversations with people that you wouldn't have otherwise. I didn't want to leave a single stone unturned. I wanted to see everything in the way that I eat it. Being under that pressure to really make it work in a short time frame, I think made it what it was. Sorry, guys, you got to chop out 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a real, yeah, it was a real hat, head and hands moment for me. 420 people in a packed theatre, massive screen, and 
yeah or i got to do a little intro to the film to see it on the big screen going off the small screen <laughs> the little office with a little computer monitor to seeing it actually how it's supposed to be seen and that environment was with the audience and getting a feel of how the audience was enjoying a, gr a great way of getting out of my filmmaking world which can get quite serious is to just do comedy and I started doing sketch comedy during the COVID lockdowns at home because I realized I had a captive audience <laughs> for all my <laughs> stupid ideas I'm trying stand out uh, stand up comedy which is a terrifying thing to do but yeah these things are a great way of relaxing and great way of taking my mind off the my job if having a strong story to tell is really important because that's what shone through from the beginning to the end.